Okay, good afternoon everybody. Um, we're going to go over Zen Server Credence. And um, I've got a couple teasers in here as well. And so, let's see, I might go just a little bit quicker than our time allots, uh, but that all depends on the questions that you guys might have for me. So, a little about who I am. Uh, my name is Tim Mackey. I am the community manager for Zen Server, which means I get to do a whole lot of things all of the time. Um, my background with Zen Server is that of product manager, product marketing, um, done a little bit of architecture work, done a little bit of feature development over the years, um, trying to integrate Zen Server into CloudStack and also Core Zen as well. Um, so call it occasional coder. Uh, you can see some of the cool things I've done up there. Um, if you are a fan of Twitter, I am at Zen Server Army. Um, most of my slides are up on slideshare.net slash Tim Mackey. Um, this deck will probably be up next week, maybe, depending on how my travels and whatnot go. So I'm going to assume that not everyone's familiar with exactly what a Zen server is. So I'm going to take that as a quick background. So Zen server itself is a package distribution for virtualization. It's distributed by Citrix. Citrix made it open source last year. It was acquired by Citrix from a company called ZenSource in 07. That also brought us the core Zen hypervisor, which is now the Zen project hypervisor. It also brought us the Zappy tool stack, which is the Zen project Zappy tool stack. Um, it's everything that you need in a single ISO. So you download a single ISO, you install it on your machine. It, that machine is now your Zen server host. That is the thing that is going to run all of your virtual machines. It's designed to behave as an appliance. Uh, so primary management is through an SDK command line or a UI. The UI that it ships with is called Zen Center. If you want an awesome web-based UI, the Zen Orchestra guys quite clearly have one. Um, it's not really intended to be a toolkit. And so one of the big things that people get themselves in trouble with is that because it's a packaged entity, if you go and yum install something into it, or you go and make configurations and do cool Linuxy things with it, those cool Linuxy things and those packages that you installed or updated may not necessarily survive the next upgrade or update. They also might degrade your performance. So it really is a tuned package for doing Zen-based virtualization. Um, open source roots and all that loveliness down at the bottom. So in terms of the market, um, many millions of downloads. Um, a few years ago, we actually ran a contest for the millionth download. And this little company where they now over on the corner just above Zynga, um, called, called Actrix, was our winner. Um, they had the millionth download of Zen Server. Uh, they're a New Zealand-based company. We flew them to Cambridge, UK, which is where the majority of the Zen Server engineering team is located for a couple days of best practices review and fun and so forth. Um, well over 750,000 servers deployed that I know of. Um, I don't know of all of them. And sometimes I know of just the tip of the iceberg. So some customers or some deployments, I only might know about 10. But they're large, well-known hosting providers that probably have many thousands. I only see the 10. It is optimized for desktop virtualization through the Citrix products and desktop. So hyperdense virtualization where the user experience matters. That's the key element in that bullet point. Being able to have differentiated features that matter to an end user. Um, things like virtualized graphics, for example. High performance 3D graphics pass through. Powering the Netscaler SDX. The Netscaler itself is an application delivery controller. A competing product on the market would be F5. When working with the Netscaler SDX, it provides virtualized Netscaler instances and is capable of driving up to 120 gigabits line rate right through it. So high-end networking capabilities within the product itself. Um, it supports hyperdense clouds. Uh, virtual machine densities in the current shipping version are somewhere north of 500 VMs per physical host. So in other words, if you can buy a server that is capable of running realistically 500 VMs, we will quite comfortably run 500 VMs on that host. Those numbers are going up with Credence. 
So the core story behind Zen Server is that it's designed for a provisioning environment. It's designed to be the target for virtualization. So that requires support from third-party entities. It is a top-level platform for Apache Cloud Stack. The majority of Apache Cloud Stack deployments are on top of Zen Server. It is obviously an entitlement within Citrix's platform, so the Citrix Cloud Platform, which is based on Apache Cloud Stack, as well as Zen Desktop. It is a tier two hypervisor for OpenStack. Some of the largest OpenStack deployments run Zen Server. It is supported by Microsoft System Center, Ops Manager, Config Manager, and Virtual Machine Manager. It's supported within VMware's vCloud, either through their NSX product or through their Automation Center. And vCloud Automation Center is the platform for multi-hypervisor deployment management. It is a type one hypervisor, which means it runs on the bare metal itself. It is the core operating platform. It's not run some VMs beside a Linux distribution or on top or around or something like that. This is one of the things that actually gets a lot of people tripped up. They download the ISO, they want to install it on their machine and then play around with it without necessarily giving up their machine to Zen Server. That's not the way Zen Server works. It's got very strong VM isolation as a result of being a type one hypervisor and it also supports things like Intel TXT for secured boot. As I mentioned, it's designed for scale. Um, 500 VMs per host, completely doable. Um, up to 650 in the current shipping version. Um, Netscaler SDX throughput. Um, last bullet point is when used with Zen Desktop, we can support up to 64 virtual GPU instances per physical host. So if you wanted to have 64 users with 3D graphics capabilities all spinning whatever models that they might have, we can get you up to that with the current shipping version. So that's all the background of what we are at a very high level. In terms of where we are, there are a couple important milestones. So April 15th of last year, Zen, which had been part of Citrix as Zen.org, moved over to the Linux Foundation to become the Zen project. That meant that the hypervisor itself became the Zen project hypervisor. It meant that the Zen API or Zappy became the Zen project. Zappy tool stack. And this, of course, results in a whole lot of confusion as to exactly what Zen is. Um, there's a lot of, well, is Zen Zen server? If you talk to some Citrix people, they refer to Zen in, implying that it's Zen server. Um, Zen project hypervisor is the proper name for the core hypervisor, the core of Zen server. June of last year, we released Zen server 6.2. That's the current shipping version. Coincident with that, we made it completely open source. That was a wonderful marketing event that signaled a change in direction, and we'll get into some of the ramifications of that change in direction, uh, but that also created the zenserver.org community, which is the piece that I manage. In terms of the Zen project membership, Lars, is this the current correct logo list? Am I missing anybody? Do I have anybody who shouldn't be up there? <laughs> There's one person missing. <laughs> so very broad support. This isn't a Citrix only thing. We saw Conrad up here being the leader of the 4.5 release. He's from Oracle. So it's not just about Citrix anymore. And we're incorporating all that goodness into Zen Server. We're incorporating all that richness. Today, the shipping version of Zen Server is based off of Zen 4.1.5. That's a few versions behind where the core Zen project is right now. We're moving forward with that. So the big question that a lot of people asked is, well, why should we be open sourcing Zen server anyway? After all, we had many thousands of new customers per week. We had many thousands of new servers deployed per week. Um, that's our commercial world. That's really free Zen server. The commercial aspect on top of that was obviously much less. It is, of course, a funnel that you get. So what we wanted to do was to take the free user demand and marry that up against the core roots of the technology itself. So open source is in the roots of Zen. It started out of 
Cambridge University's computer science labs. It was designed to be a high density hyperscale platform from the outset. In terms of proprietary software, if you're in the cloud, you're using a Zen-based solution more often than not. Others would like to be there, but today that is still the case. You take the largest installations out there, they're Zen-based. So we wanted to take that competency and bring it into the product in a more efficient uh, fashion to drive innovation, to drive the bleeding edge so that we as a project can consume those entities that make sense for a commercial platform. We wanted to take collaborative development and use that to spur overall trust in the platform. We want things like contributions from AMD, Intel, Amazon, and so forth to filter back into the core competencies and capabilities of Zen Server. We wanted a user-focused community where when somebody goes and says, gee whiz, but you should be thinking about these things, that we're working to bring those things into the product. It might not be in the current release or the next release or in some visible roadmap, but we're starting to understand the why behind it all so that we're not trying to play catch up in any meaningful manner. Market penetration, well, that kind of comes along for the, the ride. Zen Server is a very recognizable brand. Um, oddly enough, it's somewhat of a polarizing brand depending on who you're talking to. They either love or hate Zen Server. They believe that it is around for the long haul or that it disappeared years ago. Um, I have been directly on the marketing and product management side since 2009. Um, I can tell you that every year we've had a rumor of our demise, um, many rumors of our demise. Uh, and if I believed them back in 09, I wouldn't be with Citrix today. Um, we are stronger today than we have ever been. And fundamentally to create an install base in need of services. And this is where folks like all the analysts out there, like the Gartners of the world, go and miss the, un uh, miss the boat. We're about having a platform that people want to use, that people see value in using. Citrix is going to provide support and services on top of that, but we're not the only people who are deriving revenue from it. We have people who are building against it. We have people who are delivering hardware support behind it. We have people who are performing customization, custom installs or consultancy services on top of it. We want a platform where the community is going to be making money off it and Citrix is a member of that community. So our core product strategy is around making Zen Server the leading open source virtualization platform. Somewhat of a religious statement, I'm not really big about the religion of hypervisors. Those days are kind of past us. I want the correct tool for the job. And so for us, that's about horizontal scale. That's about hyperdense virtualization. So being able to support large quantities of desktop VMs on a host, large quantities of cloud VMs on a host, secure tenant isolation if you're a cloud operator, scalable infrastructure so that whatever your dream is for your host and for the infrastructure that that's powering can be satisfied with ZenServe. If you choose to use somebody else's technology, cool. But we want a seat at that table. We want to be on everybody's radar screen for a viable platform. End of story, full stop. It was about product simplification. Prior to June of last year, we had the Zen hypervisor. We had a sub-project called XCP, or the Zen Cloud Platform. We had this thing called Zen Server Core. We had a lot of fragmentation around exactly what it meant to actually build a Zen Server, or create a Zen Server-like environment. We rolled all of those into Zen Server. Today, if you take an installation of Zen Server, you put that CD in, you boot it, or you burn it to a USB and you start it, or you pixie it. It's going to give you an option of installing a Zen Server, upgrading a Zen Server if it finds one there, or putting it in XCP mode. And that's to bring people from the legacy environment into a Zen Server so that when we move forward, it's all one environment. We want that simplification. And then from the product side of things, there was a whole bunch of additions that we had. We got rid of all that. We simplified the, the marketing message as well. And to build A, 
an open source community, but also to engage more directly with other open source communities. Because this is a platform. This platform is built up of about 45, I think, independent projects that are contributed into Zen Server in some form or other. Our core control domain is based off the of CentOS, has been since the beginning. We want to embrace other storage technologies. We want to understand authentication from other sources. We want to take what makes sense to build a stable, scalable, secure platform. That's our core pro uh, product strategy. Now, of course, there are a lot of rumors that surround this. First and foremost, like I mentioned, well, we're just throwing this out into the open source world. Citrix is giving up on it. This is the last hurrah. This thing has been dying for years. Let's go and put it to death, put it to bed finally, and let it just go off into the sunset and have a great song behind it and at the end. That's not what we did. That we're only focused on the small and medium business. That we just want a couple guys to download it, run three or four servers in their closet and be happy with that. Which is cool, I guess, if you're a student wanting to learn virtualization, but if you're wanting to run a business on top of three or four virtualization hosts, chances are you're just going to go to Amazon anyway. Or Rackspace or somebody else who's going to manage all that infrastructure because you probably have more important things to do with your business. There was a rumor that was Zen Server is going to be merged into Cloud Platform. Well, Cloud Platform is based on Cloud Stack, so in order to merge Zen Server into Cloud Stack would have required Zen Server, which is GPL based, to become somehow Apache based, which not likely to happen anytime soon, particularly given all of the other projects that we consume. Um, that we were wholesale dropping features. That one had a little bit of a grain of truth behind it because we did deprecate certain features. We deprecated features that people weren't really using that much or that were intrinsically difficult to deploy and maintain. And so what we did was we took a look at it and said, is this really the business of a virtualization platform to deliver X? Or is it better for someone in the ecosystem to deliver X on top of a more stable platform and us invest our engineering energies in terms of delivering that platform and fostering a community around it? That was the decision point that we made with certain features. What we are doing is we're designing Zen Server to differentiate Zen Desktop. Citrix is a company that is a couple billion dollars in revenue. We're like nine and a half thousand employees, give or take a couple hundred. The core of Citrix's business is around being able to deliver accessible, stable, scalable access to desktops and applications. For us to be a valued citizen within Citrix means that we have to find ways to enhance that portfolio. The big thing we did last year, Zen Server is the platform by which you can access virtualized GPU instances on NVIDIA Grid K1 and K2 cards. It is the only hypervisor that allows for that to happen today. VMware may have that in 2015, based on their announcements. We have that today. Not only do we have that today, but we're learning from that and we're making it better as we're moving along. So they're in a little bit of the catch-up rule. That's a really cool thing from a Zen Server guy's perspective. We want to deliver more of that. That's our primary value add. We are still very much selling to the enterprise. Enterprise sales contracts do exist and we are working on it. So we have that continued investment internally. We are direct line of revenue, a direct line of visibility into revenue. These are good things for Zen Server. This is why Zen Server might not be the thing that's on everybody's lips in a positive way all the time, but we're there. We're silently behind the curtains doing what we need to do. In fact, we actually have a new release coming. And that release is called Credence. And you've seen, as you walk out the door, on the right-hand side, some t-shirts. That's part of our launch tour. This is stop number two on our launch tour. The core slogan is rocking the virtualization world. Everyone said, we're gone, we're dead. We've actually come back from the dead as it were. We have a platform 
that taking away my Citrix hat, taking away my community manager hat, I have worked with some very bad versions of Zen Server over the years. The current beta version of Zen Server Credence is better than past releases have been. And we're still a beta. We're still a couple months away from release. And we already have better code quality than we've had before. And that's a testament to the many thousands of people who've taken Credence, downloaded it, ran it, let us know about this problem, that problem, things that we probably wouldn't have tripped over because we don't have the specific hardware that causes the issue to happen or the specific management framework that causes the issue to happen. These are positive things. These are things that we couldn't do within Citrix as readily as we are able to do now that we're open source. We put it out there, we say, let's go and focus on this area. Guys, have at it. We've got this wonderful automated test suite within Citrix, but it's an automated test suite. It can't replicate everybody's environment. It can only run the things that it already knows about. So number one, today, Zen Server is a 32-bit control domain. Yes, we are probably the last 32-bit operating system on the face of the planet in wide deployment. We're now 64-bit control domain. This allows us to accommodate a whole bunch more PCI devices per host. It allows us to use devices whose drivers were only 64-bit. One of the biggest things that we heard over and over and over for the last several years are, can you use my favorite PCI Express SSD card? And the answer invariably was no for one of two reasons. Either it was only a 64-bit driver, or if it had a 32-bit driver, it pretty much demolished low memory and we wouldn't have enough low memory to run. We couldn't support those. We can now. They do work. They work fantastically well. It allows DOM0 to have more memory. We were artificially limited. There was a lot of incompatibilities that would come along for the ride because of low memory contention. So having, say, a host with a 32-gig control domain is perfectly appropriate now. Realistically, our numbers are actually about half of what they were before. So even though we've gone to a 32-bit addressing scheme, our memory consumption for the control domain is down. Our performance is up. We want to be able to support all the latest servers from the various vendors out there. The 64-bit boot mode is becoming the default. 32-bit boot mode was going to be an issue for us, so we had to solve that. This was item number one. In terms of overall performance, I'm going to give a quote rather than a series of numbers. I had a Fujitsu consultant last week who emailed me. I'm going to try and remember his exact words. I'm using the latest Credence beta. The performance improvements are staggering. It has a reference test bed for deploying Windows 7 images. That test bed, when running the latest version of Sensor 6.2 code, the current shipping stuff, it took 90 seconds to boot his VMs on that test bed. Running the latest beta, he's down to 22 seconds. Time to log in for all of those machines, and they're Windows machines, down to, I think it was 20 seconds. Overall usability within the environment, considerably more responsive. All he did was upgrade from Zen Server 6.2 to Credence Beta 2. That's it. That's the kind of report that we're looking for. So in terms of capabilities, is being able to support some new CPUs, standard stuff. Big, big win. We're jumping over hypervisor 4.2 and 4.3, and we're going straight to 4.4. We have vastly improved storage, particularly around multi-papping. I already mentioned about device drivers, a much richer set of device drivers. Our core kernel now, Zen Server 6.2, is a 2.6.32 Franken kernel of relatively mangled mess. Now it's a 3.10 plus a few patches from kernel.org. Nice, good, streamlined. People ask why not go with 3.12? We wanted something with a little bit more patch history behind it. We wanted something that was supported by a major vendor so that you knew that it was going to draw in the device drivers. 
that's why we went with 310. We're still with a 510 core CentOS distribution. The main reason being we have a ton of history with the five series of CentOS. We could have moved to a 6.4. In fact, our trunk is running 6.4 today. But we decided that in terms of tuning it and releasing it as a, pro, uh, as a package entity, we wanted to have something that we had a lot of history with. Upping the kernel, going to 64-bit, changing the version of Zen, those are big changes. We wanted to at least keep something in terms of the overall manageability that we understood we were working with. To give you an idea around the networking improvements, um, yes, 200%, legit number. Grant mapping, yes, 100%. Um, but those are small numbers. I've seen some actions that are upwards of 1,600% faster. We upgraded our virtual switch from being 1.4 to being 2.1.2. In fact, we might sneak in 2.1.3. It looks like that one might be making it into the next beta. The idea behind it is to support new overlay protocols. Today, we can't do VXLAN. Theoretically, with a 2.1, we could. We don't have the control plane for it. That's, somebody, that's for somebody else to deliver. But the switch could deliver on it. We have the ability to allocate more memory to the flow tables, which means that if you're running a large-scale web operation, we have the ability to deliver on that as well. Today, with a 1.4, we're looking at a situation where we could exhaust the flow table a little bit quicker than you'd like. So large scale operations have a little bit of a problem. What we're hoping is that with everything that is 2.1 based and with the 64-bit control domain, that we'll have a flow table that will be able to maybe not necessarily deliver eBay scale uh, flows, but maybe one notch below eBay. I think that's a pretty good leap from where we are right now. All about being able to deliver the performance and the scalability and not be the bottlenecks. We want to move all the bottlenecks. And in terms of bottlenecks, we have some fantastic performance engineers over in Cambridge, UK. They blog not as frequently as I'd like, but they blog quite regularly on zenserver.org. And they can give you very detailed discussions around the storage improvements and the networking improvements. So speaking of storage enhancements, one of the big things that we're adding in is unmap support for shared iSCSI. And so for those of you who aren't familiar with what un unmap is and have heard trim, trim is the ATA command, unmap is the SCSI command. They're fundamentally equivalents. The idea being that with unmap, we won't have as big a storage footprint for the running VMs as we currently have. When we do an LVM over iSCSI, which is fundamentally what we're using for uh, shared iSCSI storage, that's a fully inflated VM. So if you wanted a 20 gig disk, you're getting a 20 gig, gig, gig disk. If you want a snapshot of a 20 gig disk, well, you've got 40 gigs used and 60 and so forth as you build out your snapshot chain. The idea with Unmap is that now you can create the framework to allow for those to be thin provisioned as allowed by the storage solution itself. So if you're thick provisioned behind the scenes, well, you're still gonna be thick provisioned. If you're thin provisioned behind the scenes, well, we might not give you 100% of what you're expecting, but maybe we give you 80% of what you're expecting just because of the way the blocks are related. More importantly, dynamic LUN resizing. We have the ability today to do storage motion on a live VM. That's straightforward. But to dynamically resize that LUN is really what most people want. They want to be able to say, look, I gave you a terabyte, and terabyte isn't enough. You need uh, 1.25 or 1.5 just because of the, your usage. Well, we'll be able to do that now. We'll be able to, to manage storage in a more efficient manner. So I mentioned that you can get it today. On May 19th, we started the alpha program. That brought us our 64-bit DOM0, 510 base, 310 kernel, OVS 2.1.2, over 2,500 active participants. This is the most active pre-release Zen server has had, period. So much for a project that's going away and dying that Citrix put out to pasture. On the 11th of September, 
our fix rate exceeded the report rate. So we finally turned the corner. We're coming down to where we're going to release. We probably have at the end of this week, maybe the beginning of next week, our last beta will come out. We're getting very close to release candidate time. And I mentioned about the core performance being up. You can cite all kinds of stats, but that quote from the Fujitsu consultant was probably the best one out there. Um, if you haven't tried to use Credence, I encourage you to take it. And if all you can do is to install it on whatever hardware you have and report back success or failure, that's valuable information. There is no HCL today. There will be when we release. The HCL is a function of what people have used, plus whatever vendors say that they want to have work with Zen server. And so that's important because we've gone from a platform of being 32-bit based to being 64-bit based. We've got new devices that are going to work. We have devices that used to work that there might not be a 64-bit driver with. We have encountered that in the past. And when we encountered it last time, it was over a device that we simply didn't have on our radar screen, a real technic. We simply didn't have it on our radar screen. It wasn't on any of the servers that we had, but it was in a lot of home-built systems, and we had to go and figure out a solution quite quickly. We want to avoid those kinds of scenarios, and that's where you guys come in. And they're still coming. Um, just go to zenserver.org, click on the pre-release button, download it. There's no logins, there's no tracking you, there's no nothing. If you find an issue, go to bugs.zenserver.org and create your issue. Let us know what the problem is. If it's a little bit more of a developer-centric question. Go to the XSDevel mailing list on list.zenserver.org. Ask the question. Developers are standing by. The meatier the question, the better. So a little bit of a word about community. Let me see how I'm doing here on time. Cool, this is going to work fast. So I created a bunch of objectives when I took over. Um, the core being, I wanted a vibrant community of users and partners. So Citrix partners, people who maybe didn't have a relationship with Citrix, to leverage Zen Server and use it in ways that are interesting and collaborative. I wanted to have a sustainable environment built upon the strengths of Zen and Zen Server. I wanted us to deliver a product which can be consumed without sales guys. I don't want to have sales guys calling on everybody just to use Zen Server. I want it to be readily downloadable, readily installable, readily configurable, something that you can be successful with out of the box, end of story. Yes, if you want to go and figure out the best practices for building a large scale data center a la Verizon Terramark, okay, you probably want to talk to somebody. But if you're wanting to get yourself up and going, there should be no barriers to doing that. I wanted to have Zen Server built and delivered in a transparent manner. And we're still working on point number five, um, but we're getting a whole lot better. We just only got a public bug database a couple months ago. We're still working on convincing engineers to put content in the public wiki as opposed to the internal wiki. Some of these habits are a little bit hard to change. Should we have our internal automated uh, defects go into the public database or to the private one? There's still a little bit of debate around that. How do we actually accept external contributions? Those kinds of things are still, we're working through them. It's part of converting something from a cl closed source mindset to being an open source mindset. And what we wanted to do was to adapt quickly to the realities of data center operation without necessarily alienating everyone who's our user. We have hundreds of thousands of organizations using Zen Server. We don't want to abandon those hundreds of thousands of organizations. We want to do right by them. If we make something, some change, we want to make certain that there's a path forward, not toss it off to the side. That's not fair. So as part of this, we wanted to develop a true community. I'm going to read this little bit here. A community is a group working to common purpose with a goal of leveraging each other to maximize the success of the community. Members are proud to be associated with the community. That's the mantra. We want people who are, yeah, Zen server's cool. I might not use it in my data center. Yeah, it's been, bit me in the butt. But you know what, it's kind of cool. I can help out a little bit. 
I like what you guys are talking about. My boss won't let me use it. He's kind of likes VMware. Okay, cool. We're really big on Windows in our data centers. We can't really have any of this Linuxy stuff, but I like what you're doing. I'll play with it at home. Every little bit helps. So that requires value contributions from engineers and product development, support organizations both inside and outside of Citrix, the vendor ecosystem, whether they have an affiliation with Citrix or not, consultancies and partners and field and channel and all of that. But ultimately, it's about the users. That from my perspective, you're either paying for us to deliver support to you or you're helping everybody else be successful with the platform so that you can leverage some of that value and make certain that your platform and your deployment is going to be successful. So very symbiotic. And so for that, that's how I define the vibrancy of the community. And that's what we have with zenserver.org. It's a central location for open source activity. You can get the pre-release builds nightly snapshots, pre-release snapshots, project updates, and a pile of technical blogs. While I was sitting back there in the Zen Orchestra uh, talk, I got a post in that there's somebody talking about how to dynamically manage disk space within the control domain. They posted that as a blog. It just needs moderator approval. That's the kind of detailed information that we want to have up there. We've got some blog posts around uh, installing Zen Server at scale, patching it at scale, uh, being able to access uh, or use VMs that aren't on the officially Citrix supported list on Zen Server. How do you configure it? How do you effectively work with those kinds of platforms? But it's also a portal for common activities. The Zen Server support forms, they're not on zenserver.org. There's a ton of really good information that's on the legacy Citrix support forms. It didn't make sense to bring it over. So that's where the support forms are. Somebody who's helping, they can get access to people that have a lot more operational experience and are quite willing to help and support the community. Zen Server News is up there, as well as access to the source code, because you want to be able to have access to that. So some core stats. Our global reach is 187 different country regions. Um, and I took that screenshot yesterday. Um, and these stats are as of yesterday. We've had a 95% growth in visitors to zenserver.org in the last year. The US re represents 20% of the traffic flow. The audience is majority English right now. And that's mostly because I'm English. I can read a bunch of different languages, but I'm not confident in writing technical content in languages that aren't my first language. I'm looking for people who can fill those gaps and are quite comfortable writing in languages that aren't English. And we have a few of those who are starting to come on board. Contributing factors for credence. So if I look at this, I see four big things. I see the influence that Citrix has. I see the core functionality of the product. I see whatever the ecosystem is going to bring to me and what the user community has been. The big focus this last year has been around functionality and the user community. Bringing those things up and bringing them to bear. Citrix will do what Citrix wants. Citrix will do what makes sense from a business perspective for Citrix. We want a lot of input from there, but if we wait for Citrix, we don't get where we want to go. We can control the functionality, we can control the user community. We can reach out to the third party ecosystems whether they have a relationship or Citrix or not, so that we can drive the overall demand for the platform. And that overall demand for the platform results in success for everyone because the services and tools that you expect to have in that platform are there. You don't have to go and say, does this work with Zen Server? The answer should always be yes, and here's the person to talk to. That's where I want to get to. So a couple weeks, no, actually six weeks ago now, I put out a blog, and in the blog, I asked for feedback from the community as to what they wanted to see post credence. And then about three weeks ago, I put out a blog that said, OK, at the Zen Project User Summit, I'm going to tell you what the code name for the post credence world looks, uh, is and what some of the things that are going to be in this next version will be. We had, as part of that blog post, well, let me show you. We had 
82 comments on the blog post in the span of a month. The project name is going to be Dundee. Dundee, as in probably Crocodile Dundee, we're not certain what the actual Dundee part will be behind when we actually release it, but we're going to try and take the world by storm with this one. It'll be the Zen server release that'll happen sometime next year. The platform update, DOM0 is going all the way to CentOS 7. We're going to skip over the six series so that we have a lot of runway ahead of us. We don't want to be in the position where uh, we're a little bit behind the ball again. We're going to probably retain kernel 3.10. Um, there's a possibility that we might go to 14, but we're thinking that 3.10 is the correct answer for us. Today, we have the legacy traditional QMU. It's a little bit of a pain to manage. We're going all the way up to upstream QMU. In fact, we want to go to Tiano Core and get ourselves full UEFI, UEFI capabilities. That's where we want to be. We want to consume as much upstream as we possibly can. We want our value add to be around the performance tuning configuration pieces, not around trying to patch together something that's a little bit on the creaky side. We'll probably go to 4.5, but if it makes sense, we may go to 4.6 depending on exactly where the release cycles align and what the feature set looks like. We'll also bump up the Zappy version. The biggest, by far the single biggest thing that we heard in this feedback mechanism was that you guys need to do a better job with storage. The fact that you only support NFS v3 is kind of a problem. The fact that you only have raw iSCSI, but you don't have raw LUN is a problem. Storage has moved on. What about ZFS? What about Ceph? What about Gluster? What about, pick your favorite st storage technology. There was somebody asking for it. So what we're doing is we're revamping the way storage works in a Zen server environment. Today in Zappy, there's this thing called a storage manager. A storage manager is very entwined with the tool stack. We're looking at changing that dramatically so that now any storage type that's supported on the core platform can potentially be a storage solution for Zen Server. So that could be everything from NFS v4 through SMB v3 to something else. And core to that is that the something else might not be something that is core to Citrix. And we might not have the competencies to know if we've configured it correctly or if it's going to be working correctly. The best example I can give is Ceph. We don't have Ceph engineers. And if we did have Ceph engineers, they probably don't have the expertise to go and say exactly what the right answer is. Nor do we have the resources to build out a proper sized Ceph cluster to test everything. But the people who are interested in Ceph probably do have such an infrastructure, would be potentially in a position to test it. And that's where we're gonna to start to engage with the community more so that we can go and say, look, you want us to do this. We don't have, we can write the code. That's not a problem. But we don't know exactly the right way to optimize these things because we don't have that infrastructure. Can you help us? What's the correct answer? Put our hand out, say, what is the correct answer? How can you help us build the thing that you want to have? And that's what Dundee is going to be about. And I think that's it. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. So the question is, um, what about Kronos and the world of Kronos? So Kronos was the Debian-based version of Zen Server. And it was predominantly where XCP was used. And that is the big open question at this point in time. So one of the things that you can't do today with the sources of Zen Server is to actively build them. We're working on solving that problem. There's too much of how a Zen server is created today that's entwined with Citrix infrastructure. Realistically, we've actually been at this for close to a year to disentangle the Citrix infrastructure from the build process. 
once we get to that point, then Citrix will be in a position where we're going to distribute a CentOS-based solution. Once we have the ability for someone external to Citrix to build it, now we have the capability for someone to go and say, well, how do I build a dev as opposed to an RPM? That's where Kronos will come in under the Zen server umbrella. That the core source will be the same, but the build mechanism will be very different. So that if somebody wants to go and take and further Kronos, they can. And they're furthering Kronos in a unified Zen server environment. Does that answer the question? OK. It's not a case of abandoning it. It's a case of we needed to build out something else in order to move it across. Yes? So the question is, what about using SSDs for caching uh, disks? And the answer is, we've had that for a very long time. It's called IntelliCache. Um, I want to say we've had that since 2011, maybe even 2010. Uh, and what it does is it uses local storage, not just SSDs, but local storage, to cache shared storage disks so that if you're reusing them for a second VM or a third VM, in other words, a highly templated environment, that information is already there. What we have added, and I didn't have a slide element for it, come on in, guys, um, is the in-memory caching that we have. So because DOM0 can be that much bigger in terms of its memory footprint, what if we used some of that memory for caching of, in-memory caching of disk activity? So that would allow us to have uh, a layer one or a level one, level two cache model in place. That tuning is going on right now. We don't know what the correct answer is. We don't have auto tuning of DOM0 in Credence yet. We do have it in 6.2. We just haven't gotten to that point. Um, so look for it. Um, it's also very important that if you're using any uh, local SSDs that you do try Credence to make certain that we can, in fact, access them and they do indeed work, um, again, for the HCL reasons. Other questions? Yes. So, uh, uh, end user certification or hardware certification? So, um, the question is do you have any certification programs um, for end users? And Citrix does have one for Zen Server. I actually don't recommend people use it right now because it's kind of old. Um, it's for Zen Server 6.0. It talks about a lot of technologies that are implemented differently in 6.2 and is in need of a massive revamp. The traditional Citrix timeline for certifications are release plus six months before the certifications become available. Um, I'm trying to drive to get that a little bit shortened, um, but we'll see where we end up on that scale. Typically, that involves a cor uh, courseware, and then you become a Citrix Certified Administrator, or CCA, and then you become, uh, they've renamed about three different things, but it's a tiering point within everything else. Anything else? Great. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>